Hi, I'm Rusty Hem. Welcome to the Echometer video training series. Today we will show you how to perform preventive maintenance on the remote fire gas gun and give you some tips on how to reduce maintenance requirements. When the remote fire gas gun is placed onto the well, be sure to charge the gas gun volume chamber to a pressure higher than the well pressure before opening the casing valve. The remote fire gas gun utilizes a solenoid with a small dart valve and a small orifice. The dart valve releases gas from behind a half inch movable piston that allows gas from the gas gun volume chamber to flow into the well. These small moving parts will become clogged and inoperable if sand and debris are blown from the well into the gas gun volume chamber. Debris and sand will prevent the dart valve from properly sealing and gas will bleed continuously from the gas gun volume chamber into the well. This requires that the gas gun be disassembled cleaned and reassembled. We will cover these maintenance procedures in a moment. But first there is another step you can take to maintain your equipment. Be sure to protect the remote fire gas guns housing threads from corrosion. The threads can become damaged or corroded. You can protect the threads with a light coating of grease or oil. And place a plastic cap on the threads when not in use. A male to female adapter is available for protecting the threads and microphone. This mic protector is supplied with new remote fire gas guns. It should be replaced as needed. As you can see, this thread protector is damaged. We'll remove it and replace it with a new one. Let's move on to cleaning the dart valve. First, how do you know when it requires cleaning? If gas is leaking constantly from the hole underneath the pressure gauge, it is likely that the dart valve is not sealing and gas is escaping from the pressure relief hole. The solution is to disassemble the solenoid and clean the dart valve assembly. You will need a spanner wrench to remove the solenoid and make the repair. Use the spinner wrench to remove the nut and use your hand to remove the solenoid coil housing. Remove the flux washer that fits on the bottom of the coil housing and again use the spanner wrench to unscrew the plunger assembly from the housing. When you remove the plunger housing, be careful not to drop the plunger spring or dart valve and plunger. The dart valve is the little plastic needle inside the plunger. Visually examine the dart valve tip for any debris. Debris can prevent the dart valve from making a gas tight seal in the dart valve seat. Just a grain of sand, a small metal shaving, or other debris can get between the dart valve and seat and prevent an airtight seal. The debris will allow pressurized gas to leak past the dart valve and out of the vent. If the tip of the dart valve is damaged, then it must be replaced. The dart valve can be removed from the plunger and replaced with a new one. To clean the dart valve, wipe the tip with a soft clean cloth or in the field your fingers will normally work okay. Once the dart valve is clean, then reassemble the solenoid assembly. If after cleaning the dart valve, the gas gun still leaks from the pressure relief hole, then the dart valve seat should be inspected. The dart valve seat sits just underneath the dart valve plunger assembly and is held in place with an O-ring. Remove the seat and check for debris lodged inside. Spray contact cleaner through the dart valve hole and through the two slots on either side of the dart valve seat. The spray will purge out any debris and clean the hole. The O-ring on the dart valve seat should be free of cuts and abrasions. After the seat is inspected, replace and lubricate the O-ring on the dart valve seat. 
Then reassemble the solenoid assembly and tighten with a wrench. If during use the pressure gauge shows the gas gun not building or holding a positive pressure, this could indicate a leaking gas valve. It is likely caused by the smaller of the two O-rings on the gas valve being cut. To repair this problem, we will remove and replace the O-ring. This will require us to disassemble the gas gun in four steps. Step 1. Remove the volume chamber to expose the orifice and orifice housing. The orifice is removable and can be replaced with a new one. However, the orifice is normally reliable and trouble free. Step 2. Remove the orifice housing with a 7H socket wrench. Step 3. Take the repair kit 632 machine screw and screw it into the top of the gas valve. Step 4. Pull the gas valve from the housing. Inspect the small o-ring on the bottom side of the gas valve for cuts or deformation. Replace the smaller o-ring with part number WG1700 if it is damaged. This o-ring does most of the work and most of the sealing. Be sure to lubricate the o-rings with o-ring lubricant or bearing grease. Also, make sure that the chamber inside the gas gun where the gas valve operates is clean. Put a little bit of lubricant inside the chamber as well. The lubrication helps the gas valve to slide more freely and lengthens the life of the o-rings. While you have the orifice and housing out, inspect them for debris. They need cleaning if they are clogged. To clean them, spray through them with WD-40 or contact cleaner. After performing these procedures, the gun should be reassembled. When filling the gas gun, do not use liquid CO2. Occasionally the valve core inside the filler connector can stick open and blow CO2 gas out of the volume chamber and into the atmosphere. The gas leakage is caused by the CO2 freezing as it is discharged into the gas gun volume chamber. Fill the gun with gas instead of liquid CO2. When the small 7.5 ounce CO2 bottle is used, it should be held upright so that gas from the top is discharged instead of liquid CO2 from the bottom. Next tip, keep debris out of the filler connector housing. If debris in the housing causes the valve core to leak, lubricate the valve core with a light oil. Remove the filler connector housing before adding oil to the valve core. Be sure that the valve core is properly tightened while the filler connector housing is removed. Install the filler connector housing, then fill and discharge the gun a few times. Firing the gun multiple times will remove debris from the valve core. For more maintenance tips, check out our website at www.echometer.com and follow the link to support. Echometer hopes you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.